Hey y'all, it's Kelly from Dixie Darlings Tumblers back today and I've got a little twist for you. So about a month ago, I was sitting in a Super Bowl party with a bunch of my girlfriends and one of my girls said she wanted a black cup with some gold flake leopard spots. So I thought, how am I gonna pull this out? Let me do a little twist on the Queen Bee Jessica Flynn's leopard peekaboo glitter tutorial. So that's what I did. But then I got it in my mind that I wanted to use these green variegated flakes and do a patina on top. So that's actually the cup I'm gonna walk you through. I'll show you that version and just the black and gold solid version at the end too. So let me know what you guys think. I'll link all the products that I use in the description box below. And as always, please ask me any questions. I'm here to help. I appreciate you guys watching and I'll see y'all soon. Okay, y'all, I'm just gonna start with a 24 ounce taper from Craft Haven, and I've sanded it, washed it off, and then I've spray painted it with Rust-Oleum 2X metallic gold paint. And that's all I've done to it. I'm just gonna get ready now to apply these great green variegated flakes that I got from Britches and Bows. I ordered a whole set of all different colors a while back, and I've just used them a little bit here and there, but not very much, and I've always loved them, so I decided that I wanted to use them as the base here for this peekaboo. So I'm just applying the Mod Podge here, and if you've watched any of my previous tutorials, I really like to use Peachy Olive Glitters Clear Adhesive, but I just happened to run out of it, and I haven't gotten my next shipment in yet, so... I'm just applying Mod Podge, and then I know they have all the little tools for using the, with the gold flakes and all that stuff. I just prefer to do my fingers. It makes a mess. It gets all over your fingers, and it's messy, but I just prefer to pick them up because I really want this to be like a very thin coat. So I don't want them bunched up or... I'm trying to think of the right word, but they kind of can get bunched up and then they tend to want to wipe off a little bit easier than that once they dry. So I really try to make sure that all the little flakes are laying flat so they'll really adhere to the cup really well. And about this point in the cup, I realized too that I probably didn't need to do as large of an area of Mod Podge at one time. So I do start going back in with smaller areas and I'm really just covering the cup. So these flakes go so far, like you think you would use so much of them covering a whole cup, but you really don't. So it doesn't take as, as many as I thought it would, especially trying to get them flat and lay pretty flat around the cup. So I'm just gonna keep going around the cup with Mod Podge and applying flakes. And then after I've made sure that I've covered the cup pretty well, I'm gonna go back in and just any little areas that look loose or there's just excess, I'm gonna brush that off and any areas that I've missed, I'm gonna to try to touch those up. And then I did let this dry for about an hour just to make sure it was dry. It seemed like it took a little bit longer if when there, where there were areas that maybe I had to go back in and touch it up and the flakes were a little clumpy. It seemed to not dry as quick under that. So I did give it about an hour before I came back to work with it again. So after I let it dry for about an hour, I actually took the cup outside and brushed it off really well for any of the pieces that did not want to stick or were just extra would come off. And it did need a second coat of flakes. Not a full second coat, but I, you'll see I go in and just touch up areas that they were holes. I could see through the cup. So because I had spray painted it gold underneath, you couldn't see really as bad as I thought you would be able to but I just didn't want any open areas. I wanted it to be covered pretty well. So I do go back in and just touch up some of the areas where the flakes just didn't seem to stick as well as I'd hope they would. And look y'all, I am not even gonna tell a story. It took a little bit longer time than I anticipated getting all these flakes on this cup. <laughs> so it's definitely a process. So don't think it's not. I'm not even gonna act like it wasn't. And after I finished touching up my flakes, I did let this dry for about two hours and then I went and brushed off any excess before I applied my epoxy. So I mixed up about 20 milliliters of epoxy. I am using this time Countercultures Fast Set. I had just gotten it in and really wanted to try it and it did not disappoint. So I applied this coat of 20 milliliters, you know, used my torch to pop any bubbles and then at two and a half hours, I could go ahead and go into my second coat. So this does take about 20 milliliters. I don't normally use that on the first coat, but these flakes tend to kind of soak up more epoxy than I thought they would. So I used 20 milliliters on this coat. 
then I waited about two and a half hours and I did go into a second coat and then I let that dry for about four hours because I was gonna do some sanding on it just to make sure um, I probably could have done it sooner with that than that with this epoxy but I did wait about four hours before I went back in to sand and then get ready to do my decals <laughs> So now I've just sanded around the top rim a little bit. This, I tried to make sure the flakes were laying pretty flat so I wouldn't have any rough edges that it really needed to be sanded. So, you know, it's not like a glitter that's gonna stick up. So I do print off my leopard print file that I love. It's just the single spots from Bear Trends Digi Designs. I'll link that in the description box below. It's the one that I always use as far as just the single layer spots and then the decal i just created in the over app so i probably will have that linked in my facebook group if you guys want it i'll try to put those things in the file section because i didn't buy this i just created on the over app it's pretty basic fonts so there's nothing fancy about it i just wanted something basic just because i thought it might get a little busy with the patina being on top and the gold flakes variegated underneath so i just wanted something pretty basic to go with on here so i'm just going to apply my decal I'm pretty OCD about getting things straight, so I measure this in several different times from the top down, trying to make sure that, you know, each side is pretty level. Um, and on this taper cup, I had really struggle with getting this decal straight for some reason. <laughs> And I'm just going to peel my backing off my transfer tape and press it down and uh, then I'm going to measure it again <laughs> because I just want to make sure that it's right and just peel my transfer tape off after I've made sure that my decal is firmly pressed down and get ready to lay my, my leopard spots. So you guys have seen me do this before I'm sure. I have to hand lay them. I just have a way that I feel like they make sense. It may, it's not right or wrong. It's just in my mind how I like them. And I just kind of start around the decal and then work my way out and around towards the back of the cup in a pattern that I feel like makes sense. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. If you guys watch my time lapse, you've seen me put them on and pull them off a million times. So sometimes I can get them right the first time and sometimes it takes me a couple of attempts. Um, so I don't really have a, there's no way to explain how or why. I just usually try to lay them in a way that they are the same, you know, distance apart from each other in a pattern that seems to make kind of sense. So now funny story for you, I go to break out my patina effect paste and in this color turquoise, it was so dry and hard, I could not even get it out of the container. So I had to improvise a little bit. I had a cream colored one. So I actually took the cream colored and mixed some turquoise acrylic paint in with it. So I took this, these are the two that I mixed together and use that instead. So it doesn't have quite as much texture as the normal did, but it still had some texture in it. So kind of had to have a little improvise here at the last minute. And I'm just taking a dry brush as an old dry brush that I had, and I'm just gonna coat the cup in this before I move on to the next color. And I don't really let it dry in between just because I kind of want the colors to mix. So I'm just gonna fully coat the cup with this color and then go right into the next color. And then once I'm finished with that coat, I'm gonna go into this mint green color. So it has a little bit more texture. It's a little bit thicker. You're gonna see, I kinda of have to scoop it out of the container to get it on the cup. But I definitely wanted to add this texture and I just wanna mix it in in certain places. I don't want the whole cup covered in it. I just want it in certain areas so that when I come back in with my bronze at the end, that it'll just highlight certain areas. So I'm just gonna kind of pick strategically random spots on the cup to place this in, just to kind of mix it in. So it blends in with the other color, but then gives it a little bit more texture. Mm -hmm. 
Now I'm going to go in with my brass. I'm just going to use my same dry brush. I'm going to let the cup, it's dried about 30 minutes, the other colors, before I go in with this brass. And I'm just going to hit the high points. So you will knock some of the texture off, but I kind of like it that way. It makes it look a little more rustic when you just kind of let it go with the flow here. I dip my brush down in the little pot and then on my parchment paper because I don't want too much on my brush. I just basically want it to hit the high points on the cup. Still look pretty natural, but have that really pretty brass effect on it. And after I've got this color finished, I do pull off my decals and somehow my phone didn't record that. I thought I was turning it off when I turned it on. And then I go right into my next layer of epoxy. So I've mixed up 20 milliliters of Countercultures Fast Set again here. I'm going to do this coat and it did take a second coat because I wanted it really smooth before I go in and do the outline of my leopard spots. So I waited about two and a half hours, applied another 20 milliliters and then at three hours after that I was ready to put my decals on. And I'm ready to put my decals on. I guess I had not pressed record when I put the main decal offset on. And it's actually not an offset. I just in design space created a duplicate of my pretty is as dirty pretty is as pretty does and I just scooted it over just barely to the left a little bit and then I spliced it so it just doesn't really create a true offset it's just kind of an outline on one side so I do that a lot it's kind of my way of like a cheat offset so I don't have to put it into Inkscape and create an offset and then bring it back in design space I just kind of want to do like a little partial outline of it just to give it a little pop so I did that and then I'm not going to walk through how to do the offset and the splicing of the leopard spots. I'm going to defer that. Jessica Flynn of Flynn Sisters Boutique has a great tutorial that walks through this step by step. And it's her leopard peekaboo glitter tutorial. So I'll be glad to answer any questions that you guys have. It's just kind of a process and she's done a really great job of explaining it. So I'm going to link that in the description box below. And then I'll also put a little link up in the top for you guys because it's a great tutorial. It's kind of the same process as we're doing here. It's just pretty time consuming to walk through creating an offset, bring it into design space, and then splicing it to create this little outline that I'm doing. So I'm just pulling off the outside so I have an outline of my spots that are there. There's no real reason. I probably did more than I have to. I was laughing as I was editing this video because literally the time was an hour and 43 minutes that it took me to do this. There is absolutely no way that it should have taken me that long. <laughs> I was way too indecisive. It is not that time consuming of a project. Um, and I just kind of picked ones that were easy to slice because you kind of have to cut around them because they're going to be connected. So I just picked ones that were easy to cut around and then just randomly threw out the cup. I did not want to do every one of them. I knew that I was not going to spend the time to do that. And it's pretty hard to trim every one of them perfect so you can get them all outlined anyway. So I just did a few here and there sporadically just to give it a little pop of this luster gold vinyl love it came from the vinyl cottage i'm gonna link it below too it's great it's one of my favorite new this champagne luster gold vinyl um, it's so pretty so i wanted to add a little bit of touch of that to the cup too and i just apply my outline with my craft knife i find it a little bit easier to get it to lay pretty perfectly around the spot if I do it with my craft knife versus transfer tape. So you can do it either way. That's just how I found that it works easiest for me. It just seems to be, it's a little easier to manipulate the outline that way. And then I didn't do the bottom as a peekaboo. I just thought I would go in and add a few little gold spots on the bottom just to give it a little pop. Just for that little added touch on the bottom that everybody seems to like. And I'm ready for my final coat of epoxy. I am going to mix up 20 milliliters of epoxy here. I'm going to apply that and then let that coat dry for about 8 to 10 hours because I want to sand around the rim really good. And then I go with my final coat of another 20 milliliters of epoxy. And then we're done. 
So here is the final patina version. I love how it turned out. It was exactly what I was looking for. Just that added little pop of the champagne luster vinyl around the main decal and the leopard spots. I thought it turned out so pretty. And the pretty is as pretty does. My mom used to always say that to me, so it was near and dear in my heart. I love to put it on this cup. I've been waiting on something to use it on. So you guys, let me know what you think. So here's the patina version. And now I'm gonna show you the black and gold version. It turned out so pretty too. And now we've got the black and gold one. So I loved how both of these turned out. Very different and unique from each other, but I liked both of them. You guys tell me what you think, which one's your favorite. Ask any questions, and then please tag me on anything that you create, either on your social media or share it in my Facebook group. I love seeing y'all's take on this design. And go like, share, comment, subscribe, all that fun, crazy stuff. Be sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss future tutorials so you can get your notifications. And I thank y'all for watching, and I'll talk to y'all soon. Uh -huh.